Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Sasha and I'm a professional singer. And because of the COVID pandemics, I suddenly found myself with a lot of free time, but not much work. And I decided that I finally want to learn an instrument. And I started out with learning piano, then added a guitar to it. And then more recently, I added saxophone and it has been exactly 30 days and roughly 30 hours of me practicing on this beautiful instrument. Now, since my last video, I actually have had some classes with real teachers. One teacher is a teacher based in Moscow in Russia. Her name is Yekaterina and the other teacher is based here in Sydney. His name is Nathan and both of these teachers are accomplished professional saxophone players and musicians. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the tips and advice that I re received from them. And secondly, I'll also be talking about my experience with a Udemy online course on introduction to saxophone. And I'll also be sharing some of the useful apps and other courses that uh, I would recommend or that one of my teachers would recommend. And lastly, you can watch me practice to the homework given to me by my Russian teacher. And if you would like to skip to that part or any other part in the video, you can use the timestamps provided in the description. If you would like to follow my musical journey, be it learning an instrument or singing some songs, please consider subscribing to my channel. Otherwise, please remember to hit that like button leave a question or a comment in the section below and enjoy the video. So the main thing about the teachers and their advice, if I were to draw on the commonalities between the two teachers that I've had so far, is one common thing is to take things slowly. And with both of the teachers, we kind of went to basics. One of them mentioned this American proverb or saying, saying that if you want to be excellent, you should practice at 60, meaning I assume 60 beats per minute, which is a, a bit of a musician's uh, speak for rhythm. But if you want to be great, then you need to practice at 50 beats per minute, so even slower. And then my teacher here in Sydney mentioned this uh, famous tale about the hare and the tortoise, uh, with implying that, you know, in the and tortoise won over the rabbit or the hare, even though rabbit was, uh, you know, rushing to, to win the game or win the race, the tortoise actually got to the final destination quicker. One other update was or is that I, on the advice of both of the teachers, I have upgraded from my, my 1.5 strengths or hardness read which is, uh, I think, the lowest you can go on saxophone, so the easiest reads you can get, to 2.0. And uh, I think this help will help me to develop better embouchure as well as the softer the read, um, it is the more likely that you'll get this funny squeaky sounds. Which brings me to other points. So if you are buying reads because these are expensive, I would suggest that you know you, you should probably not buy a whole pack of them with like tens of them in there. But if you have a, a shop nearby, so my lessons actually take place in a uh, on 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 top of a saxophone shop. So I just bought three reeds, and uh, should I you know need extra, I can always buy some more. Or should I, for example, need to upgrade even further, then I, you know it it won't be a waste of money so to speak. And then with my 1.5 reads, uh, when I still had them, another tip that um, my Russian teacher gave me was if you, if I wanted to make the read feel a little bit harder, then you can actually um, take the read a little bit further out so that it sticks out from um, over the top of the mouthpiece, so maybe like a one millimeter, etc. And then by pulling it out a little bit further, you're actually increasing the strength of the read by uh, not 0.25. If you have a 1.5 read, then doing so will make it 
So another thing uh, both of my teachers picked up was, as well as people who watched my first YouTube video, was that I was on tuning. And tuning means um, starting the notes um, with a tongue. So you're basically doing, um, if you were to do like a T sound, t, 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 this is the movement that uh, happens inside your mouth. And then what you should be aiming to do is that the tip of the tongue goes like this against the, um, the reed. And what I believe it does, it stops the airflow. And then the moment you release the tongue, it, it starts the airflow. And this is like the proper sound attack or attack on the, on the note. And there are some common mistakes apparently is that you, um, you know, the novices either um, don't uh, put enough tip of the tongue. So they basically, uh, the tongue goes sort of like on the tip here between the mouthpiece and the reed, which is not the correct thing. Or the tongue goes way too deep. Uh, so basically, I think what you want to do is maybe have like 0 0.8 uh, centimeters um, of your tongue um, when it comes to touching the reed. But um, I mean, if you if you seek out a teacher, they'll probably explain it better for you. Or I'll um, they, they'll do a proper. I'll be talking about it later. But in the Udemy course, they also explain how to tongue properly. But um, this is something that I believe tongueing was mentioned in the Tanestra app that I was using uh, to start with. But it was like, if I remember, it was like a very small article or um, like a, a learning advice and I didn't pay much attention to that but uh, this is a, a very crucial technique to develop early on so if you are learning by yourself please pay attention to this so tuning is not something to take lightly you should be spending time to do it properly okay and then if you want to practice tuning uh, if you can actually take off the ligature and the mouse piece off and just practice the toning without the full instrument and what you basically do is you take the i'll try to do this now and then the important uh, beat is to actually make sure that as you tongue you don't interrupt your your airflow your breeze flow so your breathing should continue and it shouldn't interrupt like you shouldn't stop breathing out and just to tongue you 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 breathe out and you tongue as you breathe out and you can do so by experimenting with some long and short notes so my sydney based teacher uh, asked me to like as a homework he gave me he said okay you can do like half notes and then also quarter notes So the other advice that I've received from both of the teachers concerns sound generation and broadly speaking it um, has to do with producing long notes which also goes hand in hand with your breathing. Now uh, breathing essentially because I'm a singer I, I feel that I don't have to learn much about the breathing for the saxophone. Uh, I feel that breathing for the saxophone may be almost like a, an exaggerated form of sinner's breathing. So if you observe um, any child or anybody sleeping, when we sleep we actually return to our uh, normal and um, natural breathing where naturally your belly kind of comes out. But because you know we're so busy, etc., we're running around. We develop this shallow breathing where we don't inhale fully. So you know, in saxophone and in singing, you don't want to be breathing shallowly, like just with your chest, for example. You need to actually breathe all the way down. I feel like for saxophone, you almost need a, even like a, a more exaggerated version of breathing compared to singing. So. So yeah, this is one of the key things. You, you need to work on your breathing. And then the other bit that I was recommended that 
kind of goes hand in hand with breathing is uh, producing long, long notes. And what you want to do, my teacher in the last lesson here um, basically tells me to uh, take a note and you start with um, some higher notes. So not, for example, with the lower C, but uh, with your um, B, A or G here. And uh, so using one, two or three fingers and then <coughs> um, and then you want to produce as long and as stable a sound as you can so he gave me a task or a kind of a threshold saying that if i can sustain a note for 15 seconds then this is a, a good you know good um, good amount of time uh, so the other thing that goes hand in hand with this is producing a sustained sound so not something that kind of fluctuates up and down and very inconsistent so to monitor that the teacher here in sydney gave me an advice to find some reflecting surface so what you can do is basically stand in front of a wall so that the the sound actually reflects back to you and you can hear it properly whereas if you're kind of standing out in the open with this with your saxophone this the sound will travel in that direction so you may not um, hear it fully so what you can do is uh, use a um, a wall or actually like a corner for example and then <laughs> blow your saxophone in the corner to hear yourself properly so the other thing that my teachers are recommending or are using in in, in my lessons are the some books music books and with my teacher here in Sydney I'm using this book called creative saxophone and it starts out pretty slow um, both um, of the books so the one used by my Russian teacher and the one used here come with music and uh, eventually you will be um, playing along with the music and usually what these CDs have is a track that contains uh, accompanying music together with a saxophone so that you can follow along and then there is a second version of the music where there is no saxophone so you're you're doing the solo part okay in this book here it has some useful music theory about rhythmical notation and the duration of the notes um, it also is quite handy because it shows you the fingerings for um, for each note and then actually there is at the back there is a fingering chart as well and it also has a glossary of uh, all the musical terms here and um, the first few lessons that um, I'm going through you actually you don't have an accompanying music on the CD you the task is for you to figure out the rhythm of the melody by yourself by counting or using the metronome and then to play it um, without the accompanying music which is a little bit harder i guess um, so this brings me to another advice that i received from um, from my teachers which is to use a metronome so when i was doing these exercises initially i was just using my my leg to tap the rhythm but apparently we are <laughs> surprise surprise as humans we are not perfect and therefore our sense sense of rhythm is not perfect either and uh, you do want to use a metronome so for the time being i'm using a metronome uh, on on the phone but i'm actually thinking whether i should buy a physical metronome on especially difficult pieces or new pieces you want to take things first very slowly and the recommendation from my teacher for using this book is to aim at uh, practicing a, each piece around at, at the speed of around 80 beats per minute or take it even slower if uh, I'm struggling with it so again the advice is to take things slower and then build up build your speed up from there so another thing that I wanted to cover with you guys is the Udemy course that I bought and I must say that initially I was hesitant whether to get it or not because I knew that I was going to get some face-to-face -face, uh, classes with real teachers and uh, also because I've gone through some of the 
basics and, and the, some of the fingerings through the Tanastra curriculum, um, I thought that there might be a bit of an overlap in what the Udemy course covers and what I've already learned or will learn. And um, in the end, I decided to take it to, to pay and, and buy this course. And I must say that I, I don't regret the decision. Plus, I got this course at a discount. Udemy ran like a Black Friday event with a lot of the courses going for, um, you know, with, with going with 80 plus discounts. And um, this particular course cost around um, 10 pounds, which is around, I would say, 15 Australian dollars and 12 US dollars. So the courses that I bought on Udemy, there are two saxophone related courses. You'll see some other courses that I bought for my piano and guitar learning. Um, the, <clears throat> the first course that I'm going through right now is called Learn to Play Saxophone Beginner to Pro in Under Four Hours. Now, this is probably an exaggeration and you definitely won't be able to play saxophone like a pro in four hours, but it does cover the basics. And the other course that I bought, which is also a course from the same uh, teaching provider, is uh, sort of like a an advanced version of or a continuation of the of the first course and it's called master the saxophone intermediate instruction made easy so let's go into into this first course this is kind of the overall structure of the course so it has the introduction to saxophone embouchure reading music slurring and toning and all that stuff and um, I won't go into too much detail because if you do want to check out this course, you can actually check out the structure uh, if you install or uh, uh, log on to Udemy on your phone or on your Windows or Mac device. And what I'll tell you more about what I like about this course though. Also, probably this course won't uh, replace uh, a real teacher, especially if you for example, want to develop some um, basic techniques like uh, like breathing, etc. It may be helpful to get a real teacher. If you can get this course at a discount like I did, so with 80%, 80 percent, 80 plus percent off, this is definitely going to be worth your money. Or at least that's my recommendation. That's my take. And um, uh, I'll give you a quick demo of what it feels like to to play alongside the teacher. Let's play a song that uses some of our new notes. You might actually recognize this tune. Let's play it together. One, two, three, four. <laughs> If you do want to play alongside the teacher and also hear the music and the and the notes i recommend that you get a pair of headphones and actually i have a, another pair of noise cancelling headphones and those are even better because this baby is very loud so you when you play it you probably won't hear the the recording of the udemy class in case you're playing alongside the teacher and for some reason your saxophone sounds lower or higher than what the teacher is playing but you're playing the correct notes what you may want to do is adjust play around with adjusting your mouse piece so if it sounds higher than you and you want to make it sound lower you actually need to extend the saxophone and you do this by pulling out the mouse piece a little bit further on the cork if you want to make your saxophone to sound higher, you actually need to push the mouse piece a little bit further onto the cork. Okay, I wanted to talk to you about the additional useful resources that I've used in the past or that I'm still using now. So we already talked about the Udemy online platform and this is where you can find paid courses i don't think they have any free materials or contents 
the other platform, online educational platform that I use quite regularly is Coursera. And here you can find courses that you can, most of them you can audit for free. Or if you do want to get a certificate, you can pay for a certificate, but I've actually rarely paid for a certificate. I mostly audit courses. And what you can find here is some really good courses on music theory, which will come handy for your saxophone um, playing, as well as any other instrument that you're playing. Uh, the first one is a course by University of Edinburgh called Fundamentals of Music Theory. I recommend this course, it's a good one. And then you'll also find actually a whole slew of really useful courses by uh, Berkeley College of Music in the USA. And um, this, um, this college actually has a lot of specializations. And then if you go into individual courses, you can audit all of them for free. You don't get a certificate and you don't get access to some of the resources, but hey, you're not paying anything. Okay, so other apps that I would recommend or that have come recommended are these three apps. One of them I already talked about, it's a Tonestra app. Now, if you wanted to ask my opinion, if you were to choose between the Udemy course and this app, I would probably recommend that you get a Udemy course just because you'll probably get more use out of it. Um, however, once I, you know, play saxophone better, maybe down the line, I'll come back to, to Nestra because it does have social challenges where you can compete against other people. At the moment, I would say I'm not using this app a lot. The second app here is called Tunable, and this is an app that uh, is a paid app that was recommended uh, as a metronome and a tuner by my teacher here in Sydney. Now, I haven't personally purchased this app, but from his demonstration, it looked like a very solid and very well-designed app, so you may want to look into that. And the last step that I'm using here on this list is an app called Tenuto. And what this app allows you to do, it, it's, it allows you to train note recognition. So it'll give you some flashcards and ask you to identify a note on the stuff. And it has some other advanced functionality. And I started using this app for, um, for my piano, for, for learning the, the piano notes primarily, but it also has functionality to learn to identify the notes on the guitar fretboard, for example. And uh, because, you know, saxophone uses a treble clef, same as a piano, um, you, you'll want to use this app, you'll want to be able to recognize the notes on the stuff if you want to be able to read the music. So I would definitely recommend you get this app. Now, the last part that I wanted to leave you guys with is a demonstration of some of the pieces that I've been working on. Now, I've been working on some of the pieces with my teacher here in Sydney from this book, Creative Saxophone. But as I said, it starts out with uh, pieces where you just have to do the counting yourself. And um, I think it will be probably nicer if you hear some music alongside my subpar plane. So I'll demonstrate to you some of the pieces that I've been working on with my teacher in Russia.
guys if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe also do let me know in the comments what questions you may have or if you're also learning that saxophone or any other instrument I'm planning on posting some progress videos for piano and the guitar and also if you'd like to join one of my singing strings I sing a variety of songs in seven different languages in English Russian Italian French Spanish and Korean and it's a mix of um, music styles so ranging from classical crossover to pop to some jazz standards so uh, you're more than welcome to join one of my singing streams and i'll see you later bye